Have you seen wiggle animations and wanted to try it out but didn't know where to start? Well I've got two methods to get you started in OpenTunes. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends and welcome to today's video. And as always if you're new here my name's Darren and on this channel I show OpenTunes tutorials, news videos, collaborations and animations weekly. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out my other videos on the channel, including plenty of beginner videos. So on to today's video. And today's video is all about adding wiggling lines, sometimes called boiling. And I've been asked this question a few times, how do I make my lines wiggle? But this has been used in the past in cartoons like Rhubarb and Custard and in advertising, and the Red Bull adverts in particular stand out but also in student and online animations. So if your character is standing still without any movement or just stops moving it can look frozen and stand out in an animation and adding a wiggle is just one way to make your drawing look alive. And basically you just need a few similar drawings placed after each other and the wiggle shows up the difference between them. And using two drawings looks like he's shivering or scared but three looks more natural somehow. But the final effect is up to you. And like many techniques in animation, there'll be a number of ways to do this in OpenTunes. So why not share your techniques with the rest of us in the comments below? But today, I'll show you just two ways to do it. So the first way I'd like to show is the traditional way, and can be quite time consuming. And the second uses a couple of features of OpenTunes to use specific brushes to save time and give a similar result. And I've got timestamps in the description so that you can jump straight to the section you're interested in and jump back to rewatch if you need to. So without further ado, the first technique is basically to trace over an image on different frames and then alternately show those images and you'll see the difference between them appearing as a wiggle. So here's a simple character drawn on frame 1. What we need to do is to move to the next frame and trace them as carefully as we can. But first we need to turn on an option in the preferences. So if you go to your preferences dialog and then go to the drawing section and then in auto creation change the value to use X sheet as animation sheet. So that means you can select frame 2, start drawing and it'll add new drawing to the same level. So now we're on frame 2 we just need to turn on the onion skin. So if you hover your mouse in the area above this onion skin marker there's two options you can choose. The first one is to turn on the relative onion skin and if you click that it'll just show the previous frame. And as you move through the frames it'll continue to show the previous frame to your current one. We don't really want that, what we want to choose is the one to the left which is the fixed onion skin marker. And that means as you move down to various frames it'll still show drawing number one as an onion skin. Now it's personal preference but to me this seems a better option. Because if you use the previous drawing you're likely to get drift from one drawing to the next to the next to the next. Which could end up being quite different from your first drawing. So if we trace over drawing one each time the lines will remain roughly in the same place. So let's trace over this. And remember, the point isn't to draw precisely over the lines, but to draw quite close to them so there's a little bit of difference between them. Because the more accurately you draw the lines, the less the line wobbles. So you can choose exactly the amount of wobble that you want. And if we play just these two drawings as they are, you'll see it gives kind of a quivering effect. So let's do a third one. And now it gives a slightly different effect to having two drawings, but for me these move too fast, so I'd always put them on twos. So to put them on twos, simply highlight all three drawings, and in the X sheet toolbar, click the twos button. And if you haven't got the toolbar, you can right click anywhere in the column headers and choose Toggle X sheet toolbar. Alternatively, if you don't want the toolbar, you can simply right click and choose Reframe onto ones, twos, threes, and fours. So let's see how that looks on twos. And to me that gives a much more pleasing effect. So to complete the animation, you just need to copy the images to play them for as long as you need. And you can copy and paste them simply by highlighting them, choosing copy, I'll press Ctrl C, moving to the next blank line, and choosing paste. Or you can highlight them and right click and then choose edit cell numbers and then repeat. You've got the option to either repeat it a number of times, 
So if you know you want it four times, you type four and hit repeat, or to go up to a certain frame number. So if you want it up to frame 100, say, and then hit repeat. And you'll see that now goes up to frame 100. So that's the basic character. And if you want to add lip sync or some other animation to the character, as I did last week, the simplest way is to draw the body in these three frames, then add the mouth shapes or any other subtle animations on a different level. So delete the mouth from this level, and then add a new level to the side of it, and on this level, that is just where you want to draw the mouth. Like this. So that's a simple, traditional way of animating a wiggle animation. And animating it this way is useful for titles as well as the animation itself, to either have a different style for the title, or for when the words in the title reflect the style of the animation, like I did for this video. So method 1 shows how it was done traditionally, but we can cheat a little and use the software to simulate this effect. Which can be useful when you have a complex animation and don't want to draw over thousands of frames. So the basic idea is to draw using a vector level, and then to copy that level two or three times and change the brush that it's drawn in, then alternately show a drawing from each of those different levels. Which you can do manually or using the function editor. So let's take a look. So first we need to create a vector level and then draw a simple character and you might recognize him from earlier. So imagine your animation takes up a number of drawings in this level listed down here. You select and highlight them all and then choose cells clone. It'll ask you for a new level name. I'll call it A2 and then it creates a brand new copy of that level and adds it to the next column along and then we'll do the same again. So we'll clone, we'll call this A3, and then we can simply extend these for as long as you want the animation to go for. And then for each level, you just need to change the brush that it's drawn in. So you just select the level, we're editing this level's palette, and then we just need to change the vector brush by selecting the vector option, and then choose an alternate brush. And if I hide the other two levels, so we're only looking at A2 here, the brush types you want to change to are at the bottom, and then just choose a different brush. And the same for the third level type. And then you can just manually choose to show alternate levels. And if we take a look at that, you can see the effect that your brushes have on the drawing. So all we need to do to finish the effect is to choose the right brush. So the final way to alternate between these three drawings, instead of manually deleting them, is to use an expression in the function editor to hide alternate drawings. And this is quite a bit more complicated, but can be more efficient for a large animation once you get your head around it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll delete all of this spacing and place all of the drawings covering all of the frames. And then we need to add a background. And this is because we'll alternately put two of the drawings behind the background using the stacking order and show only one in front of it. And the way we'll do that is an expression in the function editor. Now I've got a separate room for my function editor, but you could easily just show the function editor from the Windows menu. And the way to do it might seem a little complex, but if you just follow it step by step, it should work for you. So for column three, we'll start with first, we'll expand that in the function editor and it's the stacking order we want to take a look at. And we want a key on frame one, so just double click in the cell for frame one and press enter, and that adds a key of the current value. And then we want a key on the final frame, so again on frame six, we'll double click and press enter. And even though this is frame six, it could easily be frame 100, 600, 10,000, it doesn't matter. And then select any cell in between the two keys. At the right hand side here, change the interpolation to use an expression and then double click in the text area and the expression we want for this first column is minus frame percent three. You notice as we type the word frame we get a pop-up letting us know what possible keywords we can use and then just hit apply. And what that expression basically does is it takes the frame number, it divides it by three and then sets the key value to be the remainder of that division. So on frame three it's three divided by three, leaves the remainder zero because it divides equally once. 
So on frame 4, it's 4 divided by 3 is 1 remainder 1. So the remainder 1 is used, and again a negative sign is put in the front, because of the negative sign at the front of the expression. Frame 5 is 5 divided by 3. It can be divided once, but it leaves 2, so again negative 2. Frame 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2, remainder 0, so it shows 0. And then these numbers are used to set the stacking order. And the background has a stacking order of 0, and we can see that by going to the animation tool. And on the toolbar here, you see SO0. And because it's to the left of these characters, when their value also shows 0, the characters show in front of the background because their color position is to the right of the background. As I said earlier, it is quite complicated, but the first thing to get your head around is the stacking order system, and I've got a video on this you can see in the card above which explains how the stacking order works and all the ways you can change it. And the second part is understanding the function editor and how these values are arrived at. But again, you can just follow these steps to set up your animation. So if we take a look at the second column, which is called column four here, bring up the stacking order. And again, we'll double click in the first cell, press enter to add a key. Double click in the last cell, press enter to add a key. Go any frame in between those two keys change the interpolation to expression and then we'll type in the new expression and basically we want the same as the first expression but we want to offset it by one so that this column appears in front of the background when the first column is hidden at the back and that's difficult to explain so let me just add the expression in so it's basically the same thing using the frame number but in this case we offset it by one before we divide it by three let's just apply that and you'll see that the values are offset by one, so the zero on the second column comes before the zero on the first column. So this is the frame where column four is visible, where it's zero on frame two, and on frame three, the first column is visible. So let's add the expression for the third column. So double click, enter, double click, enter, move between the two, set it to expression, and type in the expression. So the same function again, except we add two to offset it by two frames and apply that. So as you look at all three columns of the function editor, anytime that cell has a negative number, that drawing will be drawn behind the background. And when it's zero, it's drawn in front of the background. So on frame one, it's the third column that's visible, then the second, then the first, then the third, then the second, and then the first. So if we just take a quick look at that, and you get the same wiggling effect. Now this seems extremely complicated for just six frames, but if you imagine this over a hundred frames or a thousand frames, the open tunes will flip between the three drawings, you start to see the benefit. But for most of what you do, this is probably too complicated. So don't worry if you don't get it, but if you really want to understand this, don't forget there's a link down in the description with a timestamp to move to the start of this explanation that might help you'll possibly want to watch through this two or three times to understand what I'm trying to explain, but hopefully it'll make some sense for you. So that's how you can set up a wiggle animation, a simple way to add life to your drawings, even when they're not moving. Why not give it a go and add some life to your static characters? Now that's a guarantee.